Hello everyone, welcome back to part 3 of Sophia's journey, learning how to crochet. So, this will be a third square we'll be making this week. I figured we could start with just a recap of what we've done. So, this was the first square we made. This is just a regular single crochet through both loops. Yeah, it's a good foundation to start with. Our second square was the single crochet in the back loops, which gave us this kind of ribbon. You can see there's a bit of a difference between the two. They're equal in size, but the texture gives it just something else to look at. And by making these squares, we will give each and every one of them something else to be looked at. So if we move on to the square we're making this week, because I made a sample this time around so I can show you what we're working towards. And this is the third square we will be making. This is also single crochet, but this will be in the front loops. And I'm in the cat zone, so I'm trying to keep him off the table. So this gives us just a little ridge, not as pronounced as the back loops will do, but just a tiny one, which is subtle but fun to look at. So if we move them around and we compare it to the just a single crochet, you will still see a ridge there between the rows, each, well not each, every other row actually. The other one is on the back. That marks your stitches. So, this is the one we will be working on today. So, single crochet, single crochet in the back loop, and this will be single crochet. Let me just stack them a little in the front loop. So, I got my markers ready. And I've got Red. I'm still working in the same color. It's getting a bit messy now, but it still works. So we're making a slip knot with a tail so we can sew that in later. Let me just put my camera in the far See, So we have a bit more room to maneuver around. We're making a slip knot, twisting it, putting my thumb through, pulling it. I've co covered the slip knot during our first video, so I won't be doing a repeat this time around, just showing it. We're still doing 20 foundation loops, so we're chaining 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, focus, 19, and 20. Now, with like every stitch we've done thus far, we need one extra to build up that wall. One. Now, we don't have a pronounced back and front loop yet, so that's what we're working on. We're just doing a regular single crochet over this entire length. So, skipping that first one, because that's how wall going through the loop. Wrapping around, pulling it up. Wrapping again, pulling through both loops. This is my first stitch. So I have my markers this time around. Let me mark this first stitch. There we go. And 
you're just chugging along now, just doing the singles. We have a bigger hole there, so we're not using it again. Just go into the second one. Two. Just trying to figure out what my camera's focusing on. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Let me just get some length on my thread there. Eighteen, nineteen. And the last one, 20. If you're not there yet, just pause me and come back when you are. We will continue with the pattern now. If you are where I am, just chain one and turn your work. So, there we go. If we just turn our work this way, we can see all the V's that we've used during our experiment with the back loops as well. By that, when we did that, we were using the back loops. So, let me see if I can find something to point with. There we go. So, we were using depth perception through the camera. We're skipping this one, of course, because that's our chain one. We were using these loops all on the back. So this time around, we're doing the front loops. So we are using these loops. So you've ch ch turned your work. Focus camera, you can do it. Thank you. We're skipping that first one. So, because that is still our wall, so we can go up. Turning our work slightly, so we can see. We're just going to stick it through a front loop alone. There we go. So you can actually see, if I move my hook a bit, that I only have one of the V's, and not both, like we did with the singles. So wrap it around. Pull the loop through, wrap it around again, making sure your stitches are about even, and pull through. So that's your first stitch, so I'm marking that. There we go. Turning it again, seeing that V right there and we're going to the front of that stitch it's a bit finicky when you start because you your work is still so tiny that it's hard to get a grip on it so pulling up the loop making sure my stitches are even wrapping around again and pulling it through there we go doing the same thing over and over we're still on a single crochet so it's the basics will always be the same. Pull up a loop, 
full through growth. If we're going to change that, I will warn you, friend, and I will take some more time explaining it as well. So, we're still on the single crochet. We're just doing different variants of that, so you'll be able to see just what you can do with only a single crochet. I'm not doing every stitch that you can do with a single crochet at this point. Just a few I can think of on the top of my head. But if you have heard of something, this will be the point to let me know. And I will make a tutorial for it. I have, after this, I have one more single crochet stitch tutorial that I will do and after that we will move on to the half double crochet so our stitches will be a little bit different and as a result of that I will be able to show you some different stitches all together so we're still doing the front loop only that front loop I'm just slowly going along as I'm talking to you. So, and the best way to learn stuff like this is just to practice, just for the fun of it. And that's why I chose for tiny squares. You can just take an hour, maybe an hour, even a half an hour of your day. And let me check, I have two there. And just practice a little. So I am actually, like I said at the end of every video, I am doing four of each. So if you have some more to go around in your blanket, and it's good practice. Around to the last stitch, taking my marker out. And there's still one V. Just going through that first loop and making a single crochet. Pulling up my thread a bit. So, focus camera, please. Thank you. We're going to chain one. Let's do that first because otherwise we will forget. And turning our work around. You can now actually already see at first. Go around. We have chained one, that's our wall, and we're still going into the front loops. So, skipping that first V, going into the second one. Pulling up a loop, finishing that stitch, and putting back my stitch mark. This would be the point if you wanted that ridge on every single one of your rows, you would go to the back. Right there. But for the square we are doing, it's every other round, so we're just keeping it on the front. Going through the just showing you some slight variation. If you wanted to, you can add a square where you just mix it up a little. <laughs> I'm just, do I think I'm too close? There we go. I'm not doing the entire square with you. What I will do is just Finishing a couple of rows. You've already seen what the finished square looks like. I'm going to save myself some editing at the end and just show you that one again. I promise I will finish it just the way I started this one. And I will also be making the other two because I am using two colors for my blanket. Um, up till now, I'm pretty up to date. So... 
four of each, which brings my total to eight. And this will be ten. Then I will just need to do the purple one on this square. Because I'm using a lighter color to show you. And my contrasting color is a bit darker. So the darker your yarn is, the harder it is to see your stitches. So what I always say when you're learning, don't grab black. Don't. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> like, it looks pretty on anyone. And it's... I don't mind working with black. There are people who do. But I don't recommend it if you're just starting out. There we go. Last stitch. I'm turning my work a little so I can see that last V. It's so warm. I'm actually... My arms are sticking to the paper I'm using to make sure there isn't a glare. Because I have a glass table. And when I don't put paper down... It glares. So that was our last. Chaining one. And turning our work. And now we have our first row. On this side as well. So we chained one. I'm just doing one more row with you and then I'll be done for now. And you can finish either on yourself, by yourself, or uh, rewind this video and check back. So that's our chain one, that first one. We're not using it. We installed our foundation to go up. Doing my work so you can see. And I'm just going through the front loop. Wrapping around. You will see me hold my hook weirdly or turn my work weirdly. It's all to just make sure you'll be able to see what I'm doing. There you go. When I'm just by myself, just doing my thing, I will just put my feet up, lean back, watch a podcast or movie or whatever. Sometimes I will just Skype with a friend. And I'll be in very awkward poses, so nobody will be able to see what I'm doing. So, but when I'm making a video, yeah, I should be able to just <laughs> present it like it is and show you what we're doing. Not in the back one, or skipping it, going... I might be able to add another one to this one just for funsies like just add a fifth square to the single crochet so there's been this one stitch I've used in a blanket which I thought was really fun to do just simple stitch to border it off so I might just add that and we will have let me see fifth five four this is yeah this is three four yeah then we'll have five five might be a better amount for a blanket either way so let me just try and figure out how we did that again and we will add a tutorial for that as well. Like I said, if you have a stitch in the single crochet group that you absolutely want to learn, let me know and I will pick that up as well. Last stitch again. Oh, I forgot to put my marker back on the other side. There we go. I usually don't work with markers, it's just to make a statement here <laughs> so and it's easier you don't have to count your stitches so, so there's our last V this one is a little more hidden because of the turning so I usually turn this one a little bit sideways just try to poke it through yeah that's one pulling up a loop and 
four rows. So turning it around, don't take your hook out, I'm just showing, like I do every time. This is our stitch pattern we're doing now. So once you're done, it will look a little something like this. So continue on for 20 rows. You have 20 stitches here, you have 20 rows up. That'll make a square. I just like with all the others. So I wish you all the luck. And if you're following this tutorial, just let me know. Leave a comment. I am on Instagram under the same name. So just tag me in your pictures. I'm curious if anybody else is following this journey. And yeah, I will see you next time. Have fun.